Hi everyone, welcome to Itsy Bitsy's Live Read from Naughty and Nice, Spicetopia number 4 by Phoebe Alexander. Chapter 1, Natalie. Everything has to be perfect. I didn't take my job as events coordinator at Spicetopia lately, and this was the only event of the year, maybe the decade. My bosses were getting married to each other. Cy Sweet and Jolie Cox had built the adults only theme park where I worked from the ground up and it finally opened this past summer. They hired me shortly after opening when it became clear the park's popularity meant dozens of rich people wanted to book their park for events. So far they'd hosted retreats, bachelor and bachelorette parties, reunions, and even a BDSM conference, but nothing this huge. Cy and Jolie's nuptials would be spiced hopefully as a very first wedding, and thus everything had to be perfect. Did the florist call back? The bride asked as she swept into the room. She was looking a little hur hurried. I'd have to remind her to take some melatonin and get a good night's sleep the next few nights. Maybe I could do some reiki or essential oils too. We were on a one we count down at this point. I shook my head. No, but she's on my list to call this afternoon. How did your dress fitting go? It didn't. She hung her head for a moment before lifting her violet gray eyes to me. River had some breathing issues, so I ended up dealing with that. I'll try to get over to Georgetown tomorrow morning. You're running out of time, I reminded her. Let me call them and see if they can bring the dress out here. Captain Fred could pick it up, pick them up at the marina. Oh, that's too much trouble for anyone to go to for me, Jolie protested. Nonsense. You're the bride. You might as well be queen. She laughed at that. We all knew she'd met Cy when she was portraying the Red Velvet Queen, a costume character in a children's theme park his family owned, Sweet Topia. I wanted her to feel as much like royal royalty on her wedding day as she ever felt when she sat upon the throne in the cotton candy castle. You're too good to, good to me, Natalie. She walked toward me and handed me a card. Here, I want you to use this sometime before Saturday. Get yourself a massage. It was a gift card to the spa, Starlight K, the resort for guests of Spicetopia. Thank you, Julie. I, I hope you scheduled one for yourself, too. Before she could answer, the phone in her skirt pocket rang. She fumbled for it and then hoisted it up to her ear. Yes? I had about 14 other things I needed to go over with her before she scurried off to the next appointment. So I stood still, watching her facial expressions morph as the phone conversation progressed. No. Wait. What? Her lips turned down into a frown. He's he already here? But I thought he was arriving Thursday. Now her foot began to tap on the floor. But I don't know what I'm going to do with... Well, the park closes down after Tuesday. And besides, isn't he a, you know, man of God? She whispered those last three words. I guess this was the type of place where we whispered things like, Man of God. I had to laugh just suddenly getting a mental image of a train full of priests and nuns all buckled in for a ride on our flying dildo coaster. That would be hilarious. I just don't know when I'm go how I'm going to entertain him, that's all, Julie said. I have a lot of things to do to get ready for the wedding. She huffed out a breath as she brought her hand up to her face and pecked at her cuticle. I leaned over to swat her hand away so she wouldn't destroy her nails. She had a bad habit of picking at them, especially when she was stressed. I was trying to take as much stress off her plate as I could, but I couldn't take it all away. After all, she was the mother of two sons, one of whom had cystic fibrosis, and she managed an extraordinary popular theme park with a lot of moving parts, both literally and metaphorically. Fine, send him over to the Starlight K when he arrives. I'll meet him there and get him checked in. Then I'll figure out something to do with him. She hung up the phone and let out another sigh as she stuffed it back into her skirt pocket. 
What was that about? I asked. How can I help? Oh, that's not your problem to worry about, she shrugged, and then twisted her long chestnut brown hair up into a clip she pulled out of nowhere. Just trust me. I thrust my list of things I needed to ask her out in front of me, and then we have to and then we have to tackle my list. She rolled her eyes. The minister Sai hired to officiate her wedding is here early. I thought he was coming Thursday, but it's Saturday. I don't know what I'm going to do with him until the day or two before the ceremony. After all, the park is shutting down for wedding preparations, and I don't know if he'd want to visit the park anyway. He's a minister, after all. I laughed. Right. So he might not appreciate the glory hole. Is that what you're saying? Possibly. A mischievous look appeared in my boss's eyes. We did FaceTime a few weeks ago, and he looks pretty straight-laced to me, she sighed. I told Sai this was a bad idea, that we should just have a singular ceremony, but he insisted. His parents insisted, you mean. She blew out a sharp breath. Yeah, they're all trying so fucking hard to get along, since everything that happened with his brother last summer. Yeah, it's amazing they're even talking. To be honest, I pointed out, Sai's parents weren't exactly known for being reasonable. They were going to be visiting the park for the first time, and everyone was on edge. I could only imagine how stressful it was for Sai and Jolie. I think they, they, bef- they feel like they lost one son, so they need to be extra nice to the others. And Carson and his wife just moved across the country for his new job. Plus, it doesn't hurt that Sai now has more money than anyone in his family combined. She rolled her eyes again. This guy is the minister at the church they attend in Naples. I was shocked that he was so young. Oh, yeah? How young? I didn't know why I was asking. It just wasn't It wasn't like it was any of my business. Probably in his early 30s. He's just not what I expected. I guess I thought it'd be some stodgy old man, she laughed. I should get my preconceived notions in check, huh? After all, I run a theme park for adults. Jolie had a dry sense of humor that I really appreciated. I felt like we were kindred spirits, two women who embraced our sexuality and were independent and fierce, yet soft and voluble in in our own ways. We were just very particular about who got to see that soft and voluble side of us. Why don't you let me... Let me go over to the star, Starlight K and meet him, I offered, wanting to ease her burden as much as possible. I'm the event planner, after all, so I should be able to come up with an itinerary to keep him from getting too bored. Oh my goodness, would you really do that? Her expression softened so much it looked like a thousand pounds had been lifted from her shoulders. I should have gotten you two spa cards. It's okay, I don't mind at all, but I'm going to leave this list with you and you can let me know your answers. Call or text me later, okay? Thank you, thank you. I don't know what I'd do without you, Natalie. I grinned at her, my heart warmed by the relieved look on her face. As an empathic, I feel I could feel her stress and tension, and it was starting to bleed over into my energy. I was usually pretty good at keeping others' emotions from affecting me after all. I'd had a lot of practice in my nearly 45 years on Mother Earth, but there was something about Jolie. I guess the fact I had big sistery feelings for her, toward her, that made her, her much more of a challenge. All I knew was that I was willing to do almost anything to make sure she had a beautiful wedding day. I couldn't think of anyone more deserving of the best than Jolie Cox. Micah The boat captain gave me a curt nod before pulling away from the dock. He was a quiet older man, and he must have been a bit put off by the fact that I'm a man of the cloth, so to speak. I always try not to tell people unless I had I had to because I'd rather not be a book judged by its cover but he already knew who I was when he picked me up at the marina in Georgetown. I guess there was no way I could hide away from my title in Spicetopia. 
Everyone would know I was here to officiate the wedding united the two owners in holy matrimony. A part of me wondered what it would be like to come to a place like this unaffected by my St. Saint, Combrius Saint reputation. Not that I'd want to indulge in anything too risque, of course, but it would be fun to be asked to join in, to be joked around with, for people not to immediately watch their language and actions around me. I headed down the path toward the main building on Starlight Cay, which, as I understood it, was a resort area for Spicetopia guests. The park itself was on a different island, a theme park for adults. When the sweets told me their son owned it and wanted me to officiate his wedding, I had to admit I was rather ambulant. A part of me wondered why they'd want a religious ceremony, and another part of me was thrilled as the chance to see what their park was like. But I was spo but I supposed I'd only be viewing it through the lenses of a servant of God. It wasn't as though I could participate in anything, right? The resort lobby was as much more luxurious than I was expecting, with a large, with a huge water wall visible upon entry. The lady at the reservations desk grinned at me as I approached. Good afternoon. I'm Micah Green, checking in. Welcome, Mr. Green. She bent to type superhumanly fast on a keyboard resting on her desk, her glossy reddish brown curls bouncing against her cheek. Her gold name plate pin read Mariah. Oh yes, here you are, Mr. Green. Your reservation isn't until Thursday, though. I look at her blankly, not bothering to correct her regarding my tile. Title, not until Thursday? Mariah blinked as blinked her long lashes at me, still smiling. That's what it says. Oh, hmm, I pulled out my phone and scrolled, toward, scrolled to the icon of my email, one, and once that was open, I scanned it for my correspondence with Mr. Sweet. Oh, here it is. My eyes widened the further I scanned down the email, and then the date popped out at me like it was punching me in the face. December 13th. Right, she agreed, nodding, her curls bouncing again, and today is the 8th. Oh, my lips frowned into a frown as I adjusted my glasses, then scanned the email once more to see what, what on earth made me think I was supposed to be here on the 8th. I'm sorry, one moment. No worries, Mr. Green, she assured me, her milk chocolate brown eyes smiling just as surely as her lips. I found another email dated, dated back in August when we'd first made these arrangements. I told the sweets I wanted to arrive a week early so we could go through some couple counseling, which I require of all company couples I reunite in holy matrimony. I would put the Saturday before the wedding on my calendar, and that is the date I use to mark my travel arrangements. I see what's happened, I announced. Is there any way I could speak to Mr. Sweet or Miss Cox? There's been a bit of a mix-up. Just then, I heard the glass doors at the front of the lobby slide open, and an absolutely gorgeous creature glided in as though she were walking on air. I glanced down at her feet to make sure, but it was a pair of brown leather sandals that carried her. She was statuesque with broad shoulders and hips and a thick, wavy mane of almost raven black hair. She wore a flowing, ivory pleasant style skirt shirt and a long bellowing skirt that added to the floating effect i'd never seen a more stunning woman in my life mariah gave the woman a curt smile and immediately deferred to her i knew she wasn't the bride because i'd facetimed with jolie previously but this lady's whole presence led up the room i could s feel her smile radiating across the space between us Miss Room, Mariah said, do you know if Mr. Sweet or Miss Cox is available? I wanted to call the raven hair lady a goddess, but I was sure God would consider it a sacred. Her full lips parted and her brows scrunched ever so slightly. Miss Cox, Miss Cox is very busy with wedding preparations, Mariah. 
she sent me to take care of Mr. Green. Thank you for listening.